Jow Booza Kanad. What is that? What does that mean? Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's live stream. We're going to be talking about some more past tense. Let me just check the chat for a moment. Hello, welcome, Ahimong, Zilly. Uh, let's see who else is here. I saw one of my longtime members in here earlier as well. Where are they? Where'd they go? I thought I saw one of their names. Oh yeah, Mary Liz. What's up, Mary Liz? With the King Sejong icon by your name. It's dumb speak. Oh, it's like the language that the Sims use. Okay, maybe I'll do a. Maybe we'll do a live stream about um, learning to speak Sims language on this channel in the future. So, how's everyone? going. We're going to be starting really soon. I'm just putting the prerequisites for today's lesson on the board so that I can save some time and read your guys' comments before we get started. The live streams technically start right at two o'clock, but I've usually used the first 10 minutes or so for interacting with you guys and giving announcements and stuff like that. Today, we don't have um, any special announcements. Um, my newly released book is still semi-newly released. I showed that one last time. Uh, oh, let me show you real quick again. In case you didn't see it already. Although you've probably seen it now like 10,000 times. So my new book, it's out. I know it's, uh, it's got some green on it, so it's like transparent there. But uh, yeah, it just came out recently. It's a, the collaboration project I did with Talk To Me In Korean. It's really great. Uh, it's still only a few weeks old, so I'm showing it off, but I won't keep bugging you guys with that. Just want to make sure everyone knows it exists. It's got a hole in it. Yeah, it's. Um, <laughs> Do you also recommend the Talk to Me in Korean books? The ones that I've seen all look pretty cool. I, I don't actually have their books. So they I have one of their books that uh, Hyunwoo gave me when I was there last year. And I have the book that I made with them, but that's it. I don't have any of their other books, so I can't give you reviews of them, but they look pretty. And I've heard people really like them. Really, fighting. Minji, welcome. All right, so um, let me just go over the prerequisites for today. Make sure you are at least a high beginner. So this is an intermediate lesson we're gonna be doing, but you don't have to necessarily be intermediate to follow along, but you will have to be intermediate to actually use this in your Korean because it is a step above basic grammar that you need to speak. Like you do not need this grammar just to make the most basic sentences. If you're still learning basic sentences, this will be much more advanced for you. So if you're at least a high beginner or intermediate level, this is perfect. That includes knowing past tense completely. So this conjugation as well, uh, but this sort of conjugation for using past tense, if you see these two letters at the bottom, that's past tense. Uh, also knowing how to use the te form as well as the nika form. Now we're not gonna be covering these forms today at all, but if you know how to use these already, it will help a little bit in your understanding of what we're going to be doing today. So let me just write down what we're going to be doing today. We actually have more than just two forms, but we're going to be focusing on two forms today. There's actually, I think, about six forms we're going to be covering today. Um, but the main ones are to ra go or to ra go yu. These are, this is an ending to a sentence. And then this one, oops, to ni, which is a sentence connector. So they're slightly different uses. One will go at the end of a sentence. The other can go in the middle of a sentence. Um, of these two, toragoyo is probably fine for high beginners to learn. To ni, however, I would not recommend this unless you are confident that you're at least in the in the intermediate level somewhere. So if you're somewhere in the intermediate level, go ahead and do this. If you're still if you still feel like no, I'm definitely just in the beginner level, um, skip out on this part because this is uh, misused all the time, I would say, by advanced Korean speakers and not not as much uh, intermediate Korean speakers misuse this one all the time because it has several different uses. And it's quite complicated if you're only used to regular connectors, like uh, because, you know, nika or sa or those regular connectors and you get used to those, you're like, okay, I'm good with those. But then you see this one, this one has several different uses and it can trip people up. So I would just be aware that this is much more complicated 
than this one. This one is more straightforward. And we'll be learning them in this order. So this one first. So if you're a beginner or you know high beginner, you can feel okay with this one. And if you're an intermediate, then follow along till the end where we'll talk about this for the second half of today's lesson. Everything looking good so far? What about the Lion King? The Lion King doesn't have castles, manicured grass, and flags in it. I'm not sure what you're talking about, but I guess I have to agree. Oh yeah, and, and uh, so oh, today, that's right, I wanted to say where we are today. So we are actually, you can't really see it that well because my board's covering it. This is Suwon Castle, the famous Suwon Castle. It's uh, the sun's going down, so you know, I don't know how long I have this light for. But as long as we have this beautiful light, let's continue today's live stream. Let's see if anything else is going on in the chat before I get started. Billy, you never have any idea what we're talking about. Yeah, I, I'm, I read the chat when I ask you guys questions. I'm not reading it while I'm talking. So, oh, I'm going there this, oh, you are. Yeah, you'll really like it. Suwon Castle is cool. So um, each time I visit Korea, I usually stay not too far from Suwon. So somewhere around Suwon. Not at Suwon Castle though, um, but Suwon Castle is really great. It's got uh, it's it's a unique in that although most the majority of places you see in Korea, historical places are actually reconstructions. They're not the originals. The originals have been destroyed maybe once, twice, or even three times. Uh, in the case of Suwon Castle, it was destroyed uh, most recently during the Japanese occupation. But the cool thing, what's different about Suwon Castle is that normally when a, um, a building it get, got destroyed in Korea, maybe it was you know, during the 1500s when Chinese, the Mongols attacked Korea, maybe it was then, or maybe it was more recent with the Japanese occupation of Korea, whatever, the buildings get destroyed and they rebuild them to the best that they can, right? A lot of times what Korea does is, how do you rebuild a building that's been gone for hundreds of years? Well. You, you normally, you, you know, you look at photos, you look at plans. Well, a lot of buildings don't have plans and there aren't photos, right? So people, when they reconstruct, they would have to look at the pictures that were drawn. So drawings, they'd have to try to read as much as they can about the people who built it, try to find out the materials they would have had access to, you know, the materials in the area, how long it took to build and every, all the information they can and get it as close as they can, but they're not going to get it exactly how it used to be. So you're just seeing reconstructions of everything. However, Suwon Castle is quite different in that, yes, it was destroyed and it was rebuilt. In fact, parts of it several times. The difference is that when they made Suwon Castle in the first place, they kept meticulous records and blueprints of everything they did. So it's kind of like you are, um, you're writing a research paper and your computer deletes the file, right? So you don't have to just think, oh, I think I was talking about this and this, no, no. In this case, they actually had all the sources they used still there. So they even knew exactly how much rice was given as payment to each of the workers everything. So they were able to make a really accurate reproduction of this. Um, and some are, some of the portions of it are actually more old, but yeah, in general, they were able to reproduce it back closely to how it originally was because they know exactly how it was built in the first place. So that's just kind of a unique thing. So if you want to see like, you know, you want to see something that's really old Korean, well, Suwon Castle is there and it's really cool. It's, it's pretty, you can walk around it. They have like a tour that goes around it. Uh, you get to kind of learn about history. You know, this used to be a palace area. You can see the walls going around like the regular city. It's kind of cool to see like the whole, like the, the that area of the city kind of encased in this big castle wall. So it's really nice. Let's make it a go Billy holiday, Violetta. Okay. <laughs> All right, yes. So now we're gonna be getting started. So it's closer to two. I usually wait until a little bit later. Today's lesson, I'm going to give you an advance no, uh, warning, I guess, that to, normally I've been trying to keep these season three lessons under two hours, but uh, the last couple, I think were even under an hour and a half. They're like an hour and 20 minutes. So today's will go likely over an hour and a half. So I'll try to keep today's lesson under two hours, but it's probably going to go over an hour and a half because we're dealing with a very complicated subject matter here. And I want to make sure I can explain it clearly enough without rushing. So we're gonna go ahead and do the first one today. That is yo. And the way you use it is you just take a verb stem and you attach yo. End sentence. 
you are done. You did not make a mistake. You, that's it. You're, you're good to go. Um, what it is, is it's actually a few things. First of all, it's past tense. Past tense. Second of all, I want to make a, I want to make sure you know that this is not the naguyo for quoting. This is not the quoting form. Despite it having pieces of the quoting form, toraguyo, it looks like it's part of a quoting form. It is not quoting. This is not a quote. So if you see naguyo or ko, it could it could be a part of a quoting form. But in this case, it is not. It is completely unrelated to quoting. Um, what it is used for, it's not just past tense. So if you were to say, like, let's, like, take, let's take the verb hada, just because it's easy. So ha ta, the verb stem is just ha, to, ra, ku, yu. Ha, to, ra, gu, yo. Ha, do, ra, gu, yo. Past tense means he did it or she did it or, you know, it could be I did it. But let's just say he, shit, he or she did it. So past tense. This is now past tense sentence. Hadoraguyo. Doesn't really mean anything because it's just hada to do. We don't know what they're doing or anything, but let's just look at this. So hadoraguyo. He or she did it. How is this different than regular past tense? This one is past tense only, only when you have personally witnessed something. personally heard, or saw, or in, in, in English, you might say it's something like to recall. So like, you can think of this form as adding the meaning to your sentence of, I recall that, I recall, but, 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 like that. I recall maybe with that, or just I recall. Like, I recall he did it. I recall he liked it. I recall it tasted good. I recall it was cold, right? We don't really say I recall in English too much. It sounds very formal, but the meaning is the same. I remember that or I, I recall. So this is used for something that was personally heard or seen by yourself. And that's why it would be I recall. Because if you're using I recall, you mean that you're remembering something. And in order to remember something, you would have had to have personally known that that had happened. So. This is used, again, to clarify, this is used for past tense, something that you have personally heard or personally seen. Um, it doesn't have to be, if you, if you weren't there directly, you would have had to hear personally about it. So you need some sort of direct connection to whatever you're talking about that's happening in the past tense. So yeah, think of it like that. I recall, I recall. And there's one more thing about this form before we, we start talking about some examples. Let me see how much space. Okay, I have, I have enough room for one more. And this form also is used. So you might be then wondering, well, if I were to say, Hesoyo, he did it, or Hadoraguyo, he did it, right? You know, Hadoraguyo, okay, shows that it's past tense, just like Hesoyo. Okay, it's not quoting. Okay, I got that. Okay, it's personally heard, so he did it. I personally saw him do it. But what if, hesoyo, what if I personally saw him do it? Does that mean I should use hadoraguyo instead of hesoyo, right? So, so this is kind of a question that I had had when I was first learning about this form way back, you know, 12, 13 years ago. The difference between just using regular past tense and using this one, of course, this has to be something you personally recall. The other thing is that this one emphasizes that you're realizing something. So it's like, this happened, I personally saw it or heard it, and I recall that this happened, and I recall it, and it surprised me. It, I realized something during that. So maybe that's, you know, surprise, or just, you know, ah, some kind of moment like that where you realize something that you didn't know. So realizing something you didn't know, I can add that in. But if you really, if you want a quick way to remember this, just surprise. It adds the meaning of surprise to your sentence. And there are other verb endings that can also add the meaning of surprise to your sentence. But this one is a past tense 
way to add the meaning that you are surprised at something. So specifically though, it's not necessarily always surprised. There could be cases where it's not really surprised. It's just like, oh, okay, I realized that. So realizing something that you didn't know that happened in the past, that you personally heard or saw. So you're like, ah, oh yeah, I recall I went to that restaurant and the food was really good and I didn't know that. I mean, I was expecting it just to be okay, but it was really good. I didn't know, so it surprised me. Kind of in that sense, instead of just saying regular past tense, I went to the restaurant, it was good. Which is also perfectly fine to say, but now we can add a little bit more meaning to our sentence. So we add the meaning of realizing something in the past that we personally had heard or seen. So let me just take, take a look at the chat before we give you guys some examples. Can it be used for hearsay? Yes, because you personally heard it. Trevor, I read the comment. After I read the comment, I'm like, I bet this is like Trevor or something. And I'm like, yep, it's Trevor. Billy's, Billy's honey voice or voice like honey. It looks like Minecraft when you squint. What, is, what looks like Minecraft? I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> Billy is realizing, for, can we use Torah? Yeah, we'll talk about that. Don't worry. You might be saying, oh, I've seen Torah before. I've seen this form before. Isn't it like, we're going to talk about that toward the end because I don't want to, you know, give you too much stuff to worry about. First of all, just take, kind of think about this and let it sit in for a second. And let's do an example. So our first example is just going to be something tasted good. So we have bashi soyo normally, you know, it tastes good. But now let's say it was good. So bashi so soyo. This is why you have to be really familiar with past tense already because we're just doing it. We're, I'm just throwing this up here. I'm not going to explain this past tense. So bashi so soyo. It was good. Now let's contrast that with bashi to da ku yo. Notice here that mashi toragoyo, this mashi part, is just the regular conjugation. We're not using the past tense. We're not saying mashi so toragoyo. When you're using toragu or toragoyo, you'll do different, you'll do a different tense depending on whether you're using a descriptive verb or an action verb. So this is kind of the tricky part. So I'll just mention this. First of all, if you're using a descriptive verb, all right, DV, descriptive verb, only use the regular verb stem in the present tense. Just the regular verb, that's just the regular verb stem. So like, mashita, chinjolhada, you know, chota, all those descriptive verbs, that's their present tense. Just use that directly. Don't use past tense. This toraguyo adds the meaning of past already. So you don't need to say bashi so toraguyo like past tense or chinjol hada to be nice, chinjol het toraguyo, don't use that. This only uses the present tense. In fact, using past tense with this sounds awkward. Only use present tense with this form. So yeah, like chota to be good is not going to be chu. If you want to say it was good, it's just chu toraguyo like that. It doesn't have to change to past tense. So only that. However, when you are using, oh, and like I said, this can mean, this means past tense already. If you're using an action verb, however, you can use either the present tense or the past tense. Present or past. And I'll show you what that means. I'll give you some examples of that. That'll depend on what the meaning that you're trying to say is. So we'll, we'll talk about this in a second. So next I'll go over this. First, here's just two examples. Masi so soyo, it was good. Bashi so, ba, sorry, bashi, I was already doing the thing I told you not to do. Bashi toraguyo. It tasted good. So this one just simply says it tasted good. The flavor was good, literally. It had flavor. It was good. Now we have bashi toraguyo. So this is also the flavor was good and was, past tense, and I didn't expect that. I realized that it tasted really good. So it surprised me. Some sort of meaning like that. I realized... It tasted really good. So this is often used when someone asks your opinion about something. 
It's not just for mashita, but any verb. Whenever, whenever someone's asking your opinion about something, and it's something you've done before, or you've tried before, it's extremely common to use toragu-yo, toragu, in that form, or in that case. So if someone's like, hey, did you see the new um, Avengers movie or whatever, you say, oh yeah. Normally you would say, 재밌었어요. 정말 재밌었어요. 아, 진짜 재밌었어요. It was really fun. And you can say that too. But what if you want to emphasize, oh, like, and I re like I realized when I saw that movie, it was just awesome. And I it surprised me how good it was. 재밌더라고요. 아, 진짜 재밌더라고요. 진짜 재밌더라. We'll talk about that ending next. 진짜 재밌더라고요. That adds the meaning of, and that surprised me. So you could still just say, 진짜 재밌었어요. It was really fun. And that's totally fine too. But if you want to emphasize that something surprised you because you realized that, you realized it was so, it was so great. I recall it was great because I saw it directly myself. Then use 돌아구요. So that's why this is really commonly used when someone's asking your opinion on something that you've seen or tried before. I'd recommend just using it all the time whenever someone asks you whether you've tried something before or seen something before or heard about something before directly. Use that to show past tense that it surprised you. So this will give, just give your sentences a little bit more emotion and make them sound more, more like a native, I should say. Okay, so now we have one quick, quick example of just how to conjugate it. But we need to go back to this part that I'm talking about because this is where I see a lot of people making mistakes. Let me just check the chat real quick. Le Lazine asked, what if you're using with descriptive verb? You don't. You only use the present tense, as I mentioned. LED test. Oh, tater tot. Hey, tater tot. Let's see. Let's see if the uh, LEDs work. $2 LED test. Yes, they work. Woohoo! All right, and thank you, tater tot for the $2 donation. Okay, so let's give an example of this. Uh, first, if you wanted to say, I recall the weather was cold. So someone says, how was Korea during, the, during December? And you've been to Korea. You were in Korea in December. So you want to say the weather was cold. Well, 날씨, weather, 가. Normally you could just say, 추웠어요, it was cold. But you want to say, yeah, I recall. I recall it was quite cold, or yes, it was quite cold, and that surprised me. Like that, 춥더라고, or 춥더라고요, if you're speaking politely. 날씨가 춥더라고요. I recall, and it surprised me, that the weather was cold. So, quick example. Just again, past tense, the weather was cold. Or, or how about this? So. I want to also add something to this. So I said you only use the present, ten the present tense verb stem for descriptive verbs. However, this can have the meaning of both past and present. So present's okay and past is okay. What I mean by that is this. In context, this toraguyo form attached to just the present tense descriptive verb can mean both the weather is cold. I recall the weather is cold in Korea. Or, I recall the weather was cold. Adding toraguyo shows 100% that this is your personal experience. So, just adding this by itself shows that you have some personal witness of something happening. You've heard something or seen it directly yourself. So, that's how you can say this. But, the actual verb itself could be something that still applies. It could be, like, is Korea cold in the winter? Ah, 진짜 날씨가 춥더라고요. 춥더라고. Even though it is always cold in the winter, you could still say 춥더라고요. It is cold in the winter. It doesn't have to translate to English as it was cold in the winter. If someone's asking you how is Korea in the winter, you could say 춥더라고요. Then the person listening will know, oh, he has personal experience of that. He's not just saying he, he read on the internet that it's cold in the winter. You wouldn't say 춥더라고요 if you read on the internet that it's cold in Korea. You had to have personally experienced it. So if you were to say this, it would be like saying, yeah, I recall, it's really cold. It is really cold in the winter. Or if you're talking about, you know, how was Korea during the winter? Ah, 진짜, 진짜 춥더라고요, it's really cold. So this, this can mean is or was, both present tense and past tense, but it only attaches to the present tense verb stem when using descriptive verbs. So just be careful, only use present tense verb stems when you're working with adjectives, descriptive verbs. 
However, when you're working with action verbs, we can do something else. You can use both past or present, and that will depend on what you're trying to say. So that'll just depend like you would like you would uh, naturally assume. Like the weather was cold. Use, you know, he, I should say it like this. Uh, Chosu did it. Well, then you'll want to use past tense verb stem or Chosu does it. You'll want to use present tense. So let me give you one example of that. And then I'm, I want to ask you guys to try to make a sentence. So let's say, um, Chosu likes Korean food. So I recall Chosu, oh, let's do it in past tense first. I recall, I remember because I was there, Chosu, he really liked Korean food. I recall him eating a lot of food. I recall that Chosu liked Korean food a lot last time I met him and he loved it. He ate so much Korean food. I recall he liked Korean food. Chosu, si, ka, uh, hangu, Umsik, so Korean food. So we're, we're going to have chuahada as our verb. Chuahada, so chuaha toragoyo. Actually, let's make this past for starting. Chuahet toragoyo. I recall that because I personally experienced it, Charsu Hangu Umsiger chuahet, he liked. Korean food. So I recall that Charsu liked Korean food and it surprised me. I, I, I realized that Charsu liked Korean food and I recall that. I recall that it surprised me a bit that Charsu, he really liked Korean food. Okay, so this is past tense, just regular. He liked Korean food. Maybe he still likes Korean food, but at least when you're recalling it, this experience that you're recalling was past tense. He liked Korean food. But you can also just do this. And this is where I think people, uh, this is where I really want to make it clear because I've seen people say, you know, using past tense, fine. But the problem is that people, some learners, aren't able to see that this works just as well with present tense. It's, the meaning's different, but you can also use this form with present tense. So let me break that down. So, so we're still in the past tense. Tarsu still liked. Korean food because you have to have this experience. You have a personal experience. And if you have an experience of something, it means it's something in the past. So I have the experience of, I recall, I recall that something surprised me. What surprised me? Well, I recall that Charsu really likes Korean food. He likes it. He still likes it. He likes it. Charsu, he really likes it. Or what's that life commercial, the life cereal? Hey, Mikey. Hey, Charsu, he likes it. Okay, Charsu likes it. So you still have an experience of Tarsu liking that food, but now it's no longer past tense. It's also present tense. He still likes it, but you're still talking about the past tense because you're using this form. I got another donation. Ocean Discovery, $5. You gotta put a, you gotta put a message in these large donations so I can read it. Ocean Discovery, $5. Thank you. Thank you for the donation and the uh, LED test. Let me do a dab. Since you didn't, you didn't say I shouldn't do one. So <laughs> thank you, Ocean Discovery. I hope you can discover many oceans. So this is, this is what I want, I want you to really understand is that this can be used in past tense and present tense, and both of them are still talking about the past. But if you want to say that the action happened in the past and only in the past, well, not only, but if the action just happened in the past, then use past tense. If you want to say the action just happens, you know, I recall that he likes it. I recall that he goes to that school. I recall that he eats kimchi every day, you know, or I recall that he ate kimchi every day when we were in Korea. Whatever you want that tense to be, you can use it with this. You don't have to only use past tense. And I'm like, I'm just saying this multiple times because I see lots of people use toragoyo with past tense, per perhaps not knowing that it also works with present tense, if that action is something in the present tense. So I re this would be like saying, I recall that Charsu likes, likes present Korean food, or I recall that Charsu liked Korean food. So both of them are perfectly okay. Just know that you're not stuck to only using past tense because this tall by itself means that something is in the past. With that said though, you can never use this for future tense because this is, talking about a past experience. So you can't, you wouldn't be able to uh, have a past experience of something that happens in the future unless you're like uh, 
like a psychic or something like that. It would just sound really weird. So let me give you guys a sentence I want to make. I want you guys to make. So how would we say, I recall him leaving. I recall him leaving already. Try to make this on your own. I'll give you some words if you don't know. I recall him leaving already. You know, and it was surprising. You know, he already left. Uh, he already left. So I recall him leaving. You know, the, I recall, like I said, is not that natural in English, but that's the meaning of this type of usage. So already we're going to use parsal. Parsal. Parsal, of course, means already, and it has kind of a surprised feeling like already. So leaving, of course, you're going to want to use nagata. Um, him, you don't even have to translate this. This is just whatever. You know, you can say any anyone you want or no or no one. In context, it'll be okay. So I recall him leaving already. How would you say this? Porso katoraguyo. Okay, you you could do that. You could just use kada. He left because kada also means left leave, like going. He already went. That's okay too. Porso dagadoraguyo. Nice. Yes. Dagadoraguyo. Yes. You're good. If tong kuga porso donadoraguyo. Uh, you don't need to make it into a um, a full sentence like that, especially ku, ku and kunyo are not used for he or she in Korean. Those are just used as literal translation words in uh, like textbooks and stuff like that. So don't use ku or kunyo. They don't really mean he or she. They're not natural Korean words. So these are just only used, like I said, in online translators and, um, you know, linguists will use it as literal translation words, but they're not actually used in Korean. So yeah, if you had written, actually most of you had this, 벌써 나가 더 나고 고 you all put it here. Okay, so if you had, if you put 벌써 나가더라고요, you're perfect. I recall him leaving. If you had put 나가더라고요, you would also be correct, but the meaning would be, instead of him leaving, you would get he left. And the meaning is very similar, right? I recall him leaving and I recall he left. They're both the same. But if you were to say uh, almost, almost the same, I'll say, but here's the slight difference. I recall him leaving. Well, what is leaving? Well, you know, he's getting his things together. He's going to open the door. He's walking to the door. Okay, that's him leaving. I recall he left. That's him. He's got his things. He's, he's gone out the door. He is, he is no longer in the building. He, Elvis has left the building. I recall he left. Nagatoraguro. That is the difference between these two forms. But if you were to by mistake say nagatoraguro or nagatoraguro, you know, you've got the same basic idea. He's still, the action of him leaving is still something that you recall. So, you know, it's a slight difference, but there is still a difference between using one form or the other. So I recall him, he left already this, or I recall him leaving nagatoraguro. Let's do another. Oh, let's see how I am on time. I should be good though. Oh, no, not good, but whatever. It's fine. Um, okay, let's do another one. I recall him. Uh, let me, actually, let me give you this one. Pangum, as in something just happened. Pangum is an adverb that means just, as in just now. Uh, so that way. So I recall, I recall him or her going, so this is present tense, ka, kada, not kata, but I recall him going that way just now. So I recall him just, just now, I, I, I swear I just saw him go that way. So this is how you would say that. You don't necessarily need to say, oh, I just saw him going that way, 방금 그 사람이 저쪽으로 가는 걸 봤다. Like literally, I saw him going that way. They, they wouldn't say that in Korean. Like I, I did a literal translation there. 방금 철수가 저쪽으로 가는 걸 봤다. And it, it, literally, it's okay. It means I saw him go that way. But this is more how they would say it. If you've witnessed something directly, heard something directly. 저쪽으로 가더라고. He was going that way. I, I saw it. I recall that he went that way. 
Yeah, I recall he just went that way. Or, you know, most naturally, yeah, he, I'm, I'm pretty sure he just went that way. That's what we would say in English. Um, but you don't need to, you know, you don't need to do literal translations. You wouldn't want to say, I am pretty sure. I don't know. It just sounds really weird to do literal translations. So this is what you'd say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he just went that way. Pretty sure he just left like that. Okay, that's just, now we're done illustrating past tense and present tense with these two forms. So now we can get that out of the way and go into some actual examples. Oh, one more thing. You're not going to use this for yourself. Um, 제가 uh, 갔더라고. This is a wrong sentence. This is wrong. 제가 갔더라고. Oh, actually, 갔더라고. It's also wrong because I didn't use you. But let's just say 제가 <laughs> 갔더라고요. This is wrong. You're not going to recall something that you did yourself. Actually, not that you can't. I'll, I'll give you some examples of that later. It's not used this way. There are, there are some examples when it can be, but they're very few and far between. I'll give you an example of how you can use it at the end of the lesson, but do not use it for yourself because most of the time it's going to be wrong. You do not, the, the reason is this is said for something that you're, this is used for something that you're recalling. You're remembering something that you personally experienced that I recall. You wouldn't say, I recall that I went to Korea last year. You would just say, I went to Korea last year. It's unnecessary and awkward to use toragu about things that you did because it's not necessary. You don't need to say, oh yeah, I recalled that I went there and it surprised me. Right? It just sound, it logically doesn't really make much sense, especially because the extra meaning of surprise. So if you did something and it surprised you, like maybe your brain is being like remote controlled. Oh, I guess I recall that I went there. I didn't know I had physical control over my own body. It just sounds really awkward. So don't do this. Do not use with yourself. This is another very common mistake that I've heard many beginners make. Do not use toragoyo about actions that you have done yourself. However, actions, while actions are not okay, your feelings are okay. Oops. Uh, that's supposed to be an okay, and I don't know what happened to that. Okay, your feelings are okay. So you could say something like this. Sulpuda, so be really sad. Sulpudorago. Ah, oh, I was so sad. Like, it surprised me I, how sad I got. The reason being that your feelings aren't, you know, they're not 100% under your own control. So that's why these have kind of an exception. Now, it's still not super common. You might just still say, Surposo or something. Ah, chincha surposo. But it's also fine to say, Ah, chincha surpudorago. So if you have total control over something that's your own actions, do not use torago. If you did not, there, if it's something that you don't have full control over, therefore it could surprise you, then feel free to use it. So your feelings are okay. Like descriptive verbs that you have felt, like, you know, different types of feelings, sad, happy, stuff like that. That stuff's okay because it's not, like I said, it's not something that, it is something that could surprise you. So it's okay to use it. It's not something that you have control over completely, whether you're sad or happy. Okay. Phew, that's a lot of like really specifics like this, but not this, this, but not this, this, but not right. So that's kind of um, the full lesson for Toragu. But now we got to get into some examples. So all I've been doing this whole time is giving you some uh, rules for how and how and how not to use Toragu. But let's use, let's do another example. I want you guys to try to write this sentence. Chersu. Charsu speaks good Korean. Well, basically, literally you'd, in Korean, you'd say speaks Korean well. Um, I'm not going to give you any of these words for today, but this is a I recall. So you're, re you're, mem you're remembering that when you met Charsu last summer, he speaks good Korean. Well, he spoke good Korean, but you remember, yeah, I recall he, he speaks pretty good Korean. You don't need to say he spoke good Korean unless you have a need for that. You're just saying, yeah, last year I met him. I, obviously his Korean wouldn't get worse, but yeah, when I met him last year, yeah, I remember, I remember Chersu speaks good Korean. It surprised me, yeah. Like I realized 
that Tarsu speaks good Korean. So how would you say this sentence in Korean? So give it your best shot. Oh yeah, Ren, Ren Shin wrote, keep with the That's right, yeah, you could use that. How do you express surprise that you did something? Like, I was surprised that I finished all at one time. <laughs> you would just say, faster than I thought. 생각했던 것보다, 생각했던 것보다, more than what I thought. 빨리 먹었어. But you wouldn't use a surprise about something that you did yourself otherwise. And I'll give you an example of how you could, but later. 철수 씨 한국말 잘 했더라고요. Oh, remember, we're doing speaks, speaks. So present tense. Ocean discovery, present tense. 철수 씨가 한국어 잘 하더라고요. 하더라고요. Yeah, if you used 했더라고요, you're still, you're not wrong. So I'm not going to be too strict on that. But the meaning is slightly different. Oh, Victoria Lewis, you wrote hey doragueo, but it's not hey. It's remember it's the verb stem, which comes from hata. Tarsu shi nan hango or tarhadoragueo. Okay. Tarsu shi tarsu hango tarhadorago. Nice. Tarsu nan hango or tarhadoragueo. Tarsu nan tarhadoragueo. Nice, nice. Okay. Good job, guys. You're doing really good. So let's give you a uh, let me give you one that you could write down in case you're wondering. Tarsu or just Tarsu Shi Sika Hangugo Oops, sorry, that was a weird L. <laughs> Tar Ha Toragu Yo Tarsu Sika Hangugo Tar Hadoragu. So I remember, I recall that Tarsu speaks Korean well. So, ha doragwe speaks. I recall he's, yeah, he speaks pr Korean pretty well because I've met him before and heard him speak Korean and it surprised me. I didn't expect he'd speak Korean that well. So it's really common you'll hear people talk about like um, how good or how bad someone is at doing something by using this form. The reason is they, because they have a personal experience of knowing that. Like maybe you watch um, your, a sports player and he does your, the sport. <laughs> And you saw <laughs> you saw him play in person and he was really good. You say 정말 잘하더라고. 정말 잘하더라고. He was really good. I recall that he was good at the the sport that he played. Or if you want to say he was good. 잘했더라고요. Like he was good. You may maybe he's not anymore or maybe he still is, but just at that time when you're recalling the where you're call, recalling the memory from, at that time he wasn't good. So you can use it either way you want. I don't know much about sports. I'm sorry. I was trying to think of like an example, but I was like, he threw the ball and made the winning points at the biggest competition. Okay. Uh, let's do another one. Korea was very hot in the summer. Korea was very hot in the summer. So you meet, you go to Korea right now and you come back and your friend's like, oh, 어땠어요? 날씨가 어땠어요? How was the weather? And you want to say, oh, Korea was very hot in the summer. So Korea was very hot in the summer. How would you say that? So summer is 여름. I'll just give you 여름에 if you want for the, the part of it. 여름에, Korea, of course, 한국. Hot, topta. So how would you say that? Hanguge do to. Nope, Troy Bolton, remember. Remember about the verb uh, tense used with torawio. The one and only. 한국은 진짜 덥더라고. Yeah, nice. That's nice too. 한국에서는 여름에 날씨가 정말 덥더라고요. Okay, oh, okay. okay. 여름에 정, 날씨가 정말 덥더라고요. Nice. 한국 여름에 덥더라고. It's really hot in Korea summer. That's a little bit awkward, Leticia, because you put in Korea summer. 
You might want to say Hangukun Yorome, something like that. As for Korea in summer, topdarag but the rest is fine. Hangukun Jongmar, ah ah, Ameriliz. Oh yeah yeah okay, I see you fixed it. You fixed it. I was gonna call you up, but yeah, I see you rewrote that part. Correct. Hangukun Yorom topdarag. Ah, you don't want to just do Hangukun Yorom. That just means Korea summer. You want to say Korea is. Or Korea was very hot in the summer. You're not saying Korean summers are hot. Okay, so let me give you an example. 여름에 한국이 Like I said, there could be other ways to write this. 한국이 uh, very... We're just going to use... Well, I'll use 정말 for this example, but you can use 아주 or 진짜 or whatever you want. And then remember, it's just 덥다. So you just get 덥. You don't have to conjugate it. It doesn't have any special rules. So if, it, if things have special rules, I'll try to tell you as much as possible. In this case, no. 덥더라고. 요. 여름에 한국이, in summer, Korea, 정말? Really? Very? 덥더라고요. Korea is so hot in the summer, and I have a personal experience to know that, and I realized it. Like, oh man, Korea is really hot in the summer. I'm not just saying Korea is very hot in the summer. I'm saying, wow, Korea's really hot in the summer. Like, ah, I didn't know that. I expected, I mean, I knew it would be hot, but 아니, 정말 덥더라고요. It's so hot. Like, I didn't expect that. It surprised me. So that's the feeling you get by using 덥더라고요. Let's go on to another one. Sorry, I know I'm like doing bad acting and exaggerating stuff, but I really want it to be clear that how this form has a different meaning than just the regular past tense. Uh, let's see, how are we on time? 2.34, terrible. Great. Okay. But that's okay. Uh, this is a, quite a long topic to, we're doing today. Let's say... Okay, okay, here we go. Oh, actually, I won't do this because I already did Mashita, so I won't do that one. Okay, let's do the movie. Okay, so the movie was very fun. So how was the movie? Oh, well, the movie was fun. Or very fun. The movie was very fun. And it surprised me. Like, I mean, I was gonna I was going into uh, the land before time 25. I was expecting nothing, but the movie was movie was very fun. How would you say this? Movie going to be Yong Hua. You can go ahead and get started if you don't if you already know these words. Uh, very, you can use whatever you want. Aju, there's like a million words. And then fun, you're going to want to use, probably, most likely, 재미있다. Let's check this out. Nice, I see a Mary Liz first, as always. 영어가 진짜 재밌더라고요. Perfect. 영어는 재밌더라고요. Nice. 영어가 재밌더라고요. 영어가 엄청 재밌더라고요. Nice, 좋아해. 영어가 진짜 재밌더라고요. Okay, cool. 정말, 정말 너무 재밌더라고요. Uh, Tiffany, stay my day. You have a you have a spelling error for Tammy, but I'm just pointing, just letting you know. You want Tammy throw girl? Nice, nice. You want Aju Tammy throw girl? Aju Tammy throw girl. You want her? No, the Diphilia Gray. I can't read the name. Uh, this lesson is going to be above your level, but you will not want to use the object marker with descriptive verbs. Ah, uh, descriptive verbs can never take an object. I think I have a video about um, that as well, or a bunch of videos about that. But yeah. Just know that the descriptive verbs do not take objects, so they cannot use the object marker. 영어가 아주 재밌더라고요. 그 영어가 정말... Uh, Ocean Discovery, you have the wrong the wrong spelling for 재미. should be this one. But the rest of the sentence is perfect. 매우 uh, 재밌더라고요. Not... Uh, Anna Mira, it's not past tense, remember? It's only present tense. You might have... You probably came in here late when I was describing that during the beginning of the lesson. Andrea Vignon, you cannot use the... Past tense descriptive verb stems. The reason being is that it's not even required because Toraguyo as it is shows past tense. That would be like saying, I recall that it had had been cold. It's kind of like in that in the case with descriptive verbs, it sounds like you're using a double past tense and it just sounds repetitive and awkward. So it's not used. Okay, nice. I think you most of for the most part, I saw a lot of really good answers, uh, well, perfect answers, actually. You could say 영어가, and then 아주, or 정말, or whatever you want to say. 재미, and then after here, 더라고, 요. 영어가 정말 아주 엄청 너무 
진짜 재밌더라고요. So I recall that the movie was or is could be both in context. If someone says how was the movie, you can say oh yeah the movie is really fun. Yeah, it, this this works too. Same exact sentence can have is or was as the meaning. Same with the Ah, the movie was very fun, and I recall that because I personally saw it, and it surprised me. I didn't expect much from Land Before Land Before Time 25, but the movie was great. So let's move on. I want to do one more example before we go to our next form. I know we're, I'm a little bit behind on time, but whatever. I want to make sure we do enough, you know examples with you guys, so it's okay if it goes up to two hours. And the last sentence is, let's do this one. Charsu, our good friend Charsu is so helpful by volunteering for every single sentence. I asked Charsu. In Korean, they say ask to, always. Ask to, not just ask. If you just say Charsu, it means what you asked was Charsu. It doesn't make any sense. You ask a question. You can ask something, but you don't ask someone. You ask something to someone. So, Charsu ante, And what happened? 모르더라고. Yo. So I asked Charsu, but Siman, he doesn't know. I recall I asked him and he he doesn't know. So here we're doing present tense, so 모르다, not 몰랐다. We could also say 몰랐더라고요. He didn't know. I asked Charsu, but he didn't know. But here we're just saying, yeah, I asked Charsu and he doesn't know, which is also perfectly fine. I asked Charsu, but he doesn't know. I personally remember that I asked Charsu and he said or something, whatever, I personally heard, found out, and realized that. Charsu didn't know when I asked him. So I asked Charsu, but he didn't know. I was surprised. I thought maybe Charsu might know, but no. I realized Charsu didn't know. Charsu doesn't know. So that's our last example with Toragoyo. But we're not quite done with this form. I have one more thing I want to mention about this form before we move on. Some of you are already asking about this. Um, you're saying, oh, Billy, what's a, uh, I've seen Torago, what is to Tora? Sometimes you might see just Tora. You know, first, of course, we have Torago yo. We also have Torago if you're speaking casually, but you also see Tora. Tora, well, what is Tora? It's the exact same meaning as Toraguyo, works in the exact same way, same conjugation. The only difference is that this one is only for casual because um, although Toraguyo is also casual because it doesn't have a yo, Toraguyo being kind of more polite, Toraguyo is also casual, but Tora is only casual. It cannot be made polite. You cannot say Torayo. You can't make it polite anyway. Tora is only casual. It's actually a little bit more casual than Torago because it's more emphatic. It has more emphasis. So that by that I mean it's a little bit stronger sounding. Like, ha, ah, it was that way. I re I'm surprised. Yeah, I was really surprised at that. So, mashi Torago. The, the food tasted really good. Oh, mashi Torago. Like, it was really good, I remember. So it's just a little more emphasis, a little more emphasis that you're surprised at something. Um, but other than that, it's the exact same meaning. So you don't have to learn any new rules for this. Just only casual. So only use Torah with your closest friends who are also the same age as you or younger. And know that it has more emphasis on the fact that you are surprised. So like you really didn't realize it. Yeah, Torah. So you'll hear this a lot with friends. Uh, it doesn't mean that when you're talking with friends, don't use Torah. -go. No, Torah -go is perfectly fine to use with your friends too. It's also casual. Just know if you want to be more emphatic, if you want to say it more strongly that you didn't realize something, then use Torah. But it's the same other than that. We'll do another form too after we do these. Uh, there's a couple other forms, but these are the main ones. So Torah and Torah. Let me just check the chat for a moment before we go on to our next lesson. Actually, we're not too far behind, about 15 minutes behind where I was thinking we'd be. 
철수한테 물어봤지만 Oh, Claire Smith, you wrote 모르더라고요. It said 모. It should be 모. Just the, make the vowel upside down. 항상 가르쳐서 주셨어. Oh, should be 주셔서. Not past tense. Not 주셨어, but 주셔서. 진심으로 감사합니다. 인도에서요. 감독님. A little bit far. 몰랐더라고요. Yes, Lazare Langnier. You could also use 몰랐더라고요. As I mentioned. 철수가 만나봤지만 애기를 뭐, what? <laughs> 철수가? I'm, I think you might say I met 철수 철수를 철수를 만나봤지만 uh, he was eating babies, okay? Alright, Renshin you know, whatever helps you <laughs> memorize not only for past, present okay, I'm just reading the comments real quick Skit, we talking about using it with your own motions? You missed that. We did that about uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. Yeah, it's fine to use it with your own emotions. Charsu is a baby eater and uh, does everything and doesn't do everything at the same time. Charsu is like a, um, what do you call that? Paradox? He is both the nicest guy you'll ever meet and the worst human being to ever exist. So let's, let's move on. Tony, someday I'll meet Charsu. Tony, I've never met a Charsu yet, but it's it's a fairly common, although old name. So you're not likely to meet anyone named Charsu today just because it's such an older sounding name. But you know, there still are some and you would meet someone, if you met someone named Charsu, they would be quite old, typically like 60s, 70s, something like that. Okay, the next we're gonna be using is actually, learning is um, definitely more involving, Tony. But I've done my best. I spent two two days, two full days almost, um, condensing this lesson as simple as I can possibly explain it. Because I've explained this before in my books. I've made a lesson about it, but I've only really just scratched the surface in my video lesson. I think I think I have a video lesson about this. If I if I did, I only basically scratched the surface. And my books go into this form, but only at that low intermediate level. So just the introduction to this form. Today, I'm going to try to break it down a little bit more. And I'm going to give you a disclaimer first. If you are a beginner, get out now for your own sake. <laughs> I mean that as in don't overwhelm yourself. So if you're a beginner, feel free to keep watching, but do not hit yourself when you don't get this as a beginner, because this does have more rules to it than Torago. And I guess it's more involved, but it's very useful. So, you know, maybe stick around and just kind of keep your ears open, but don't stress about learning it from today. So, Tony. Tony actually has three uses, two of which are the main ones that I think two, the second one kind of encompasses the third one as well, but two, two really distinct uses, Tony. And the first thing though is that I'm gonna give you is the secret to understanding Tony. Before we even talk about the lesson, here's the secret to understanding Tony. First, we have to. To, as I mentioned from Torago, to by itself actually means past experience. To, within any form, by itself has the meaning of something is a past experience. So, Torago, the part that gives it the past tense is simply just to. The part that gives torago the past tense meaning is just to, and that also is what gives it the meaning that you personally exper experienced it. That's it. The rest of the torago form, it, I don't, I'm not going to break it down for you today. It's partially from the quoting form, but it's not. Um, so to is first we have to, past experience. Then we have the second part, which is actually a form that you know, nika, because. And this is why I stressed, one of the reasons why I stressed that you know how this form works before today's lesson, because this means because. One of the meanings of this form, uh, it doesn't only mean because though, I should say that. This is to, past experience, plus ni, nika. I'm just gonna write ni, it's the same thing though. It's not used as tonika, it's only toni. Ni, however, can mean because. It also has another, re another meaning, you'll see next. 
But me by itself, you've known it already as meaning because. So because of some past experience, something else happened. So this is a sentence connector. So it goes in the middle of a sentence. So it goes, it's, it goes at the end of a verb, but it connects two sentences together. So because the first part happened in the past, this is what happens afterward. That's the meaning of the sentence. Because A, B. That is the meaning, literally, of Tony. And I think if you keep this in mind while you're learning Tony, it'll help you to avoid misusing it. Because this is also very frequently misused by a lot of Korean speakers. When you learn this form, you'll learn that it can, it has, you'll learn that it can mean because, and you'll learn that it could mean, um, sorry, you won't learn that it means because. You'll learn that it could mean um, but or and. Like, I did this, but this happened. That's the common way that it's, it's taught. But that's only scratching the surface. The literal meaning of is to ni, because some sort of past experience. Now, that doesn't mean that's the only way that it's used, and you'll see why when we go over that. But I just want you to know this first. This is kind of the secret to understanding to ni, is knowing that it's to plus ni. It's not some magical new form with new things you've never seen before. It's to that you know and love, combined with ni from nika, which you learned as a beginner. So that's what it is. So let's do, let's go on. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll talk about to ni, how you use it again. Sorry, I shouldn't have erased this. If you're using descriptive verbs, again, only use the present tense. And this actually applies to any form that uses to. You don't have to know that. But anytime you have descriptive verb, just use the present tense stem, just like with toragu. And same with action verb. You can use, I was trying to write present and past at the same time. That didn't work. You can use present tense or past tense depending on which one fits better with the meaning of your sentence. And we'll talk about that. That might be a little bit different than you're expecting, but basically it's the same. Basically it works the same way. Descriptive verbs only in the present tense, action verbs in the present tense or past tense depending on which one fits the meaning better. Okay, that's all the explaining I have to do with how to use this verb, sorry, how to use this form like with conjugation and stuff, but let's give an example of the first way to use toni. Now the toni, like I said, has three uses, but I'm just going to condense them into two for today's lesson. What am I doing? Two. Okay, I'm condensing it into two lessons for today. That kind of hurts. Two lessons today, although it's actually three uses. Condensing it into two uses so I can kind of make it a little bit easier to digest. The first one is a sentence connector. What it connects are two sentences, of course, as a sentence connector. So nothing, nothing, nothing here is revolutionary. It's just a sentence connector. It connects two sentences. I'm just kind of breaking it down for you. And contrasts them. Oh, one second, let me just grab this. So it contrasts two sentences. When, so one sentence happens and then this sentence happens and these two sentences are now contrasted. So in this way, it's kind of like the te form, which also contrasts two sentences. This is why you need to know the te form first before you start on this form because then you can kind of pull over that knowledge into this form. Do you remember what, how the te form is used? Do you remember how it shows contrast by doing, well, this sentence and this sentence. So that can sometimes mean this sentence and this sentence or this sentence, but this sentence, but you've got this on one hand. Well, how about this? That's how it contrasts two sentences. If you don't quite understand that concept with te, how it contrasts, I have a live stream and a live stream abridged that you can watch. But what you get is a particle that adds the meaning of and or but, depending on the sentence. But by doing this, it's contrasting the two sentences. So that sometimes that might translate better as, you know, this and that, or this but that. And that'll just depend on the sentence. It's just like te. It can be and or but or even though, or it has a few other uses. Um, so it also has, still has the meaning of a personal experience. 
Sorry. So, so far I'm showing you a bunch of things. The only thing new that you have to pay attention to is this one. Because you already know it's, con it's connecting. It, it connects, well, it's going to connect two sentences, of course. And it's a personal experience because it has to in it. And, okay, so it, does, it contrasts two sentences. By contrasting these two sentences, you are showing that something, that the second part of the sentence, that these two sentences, that contrast, that was unexpected or surprising. Just like with torago. So remember I used torago to show something surprised you, like it was unexpected to you. So it was good and I didn't expect that. It surprised me the movie, taste, the movie, the movie tasted good. It surprised me the movie was so good or it surprised me he spoke Korean so well. It surprised me he already left, you know, something like that. This is the same meaning of something that was surprising. The reason is because of this tall piece. This tall piece adds a personal experience. And by adding this to, by emphasizing that something was a personal experience to you, at the same time, it also happens to show that something was a bit surprising to you. So these kind of things, these kind of meanings just go hand in hand with all of the tall forms. You'll see them commonly. So tall, sentence connector with two sentences, contrasts those two sentences, their personal experience to you, at least the one that you use Tony, it has to be a personal, something you personally experienced. And by doing that, by contrasting that, you're showing that you were surprised, surprised by what the result was, surprised by the second part of the sentence, like that. So something surprised you. Okay, now we've covered the basics of Tony. So let's do some actual examples. Let me give you one example, and then I'll have you guys do one. So let me check the chat for a second, make sure we're still doing okay here. Uh, don't jump ahead, Tiffany. Don't jump ahead. I want to make sure I can cover this in, in order because this is very frequently misused by people. Okay, L like I said, there's two main uses of it. The, we're doing the first meeting. We're not doing that. Uh, well, there's another usage of it, usage of this form we're going to do next. So let's do this. Tarsu, Tarsuga, Wolle. Wolle just means normally, like original. Literally, Wolle means originally, like originally something. But it's also it's often just used as like normally, like oh he's always normally like that, you know, always normally, or just normally, however you want to translate it. But it doesn't mean normally like I am normally bored or something like that. It's like originally something. So by nature, Charsu is always normally, he's normally busy. So remember I said that descriptive verbs, it just attaches to the regular present tense descriptive verb, but it's past tense by nature. So Charsu is originally, Charsu is normally busy or Charsu was normally busy. Whether it's is or was will just come by the context of the sentence. So you don't have to worry about it. So Charsu's, Charsu's normally busy. Contrast. What's the second part of the sentence? And or but. Well, that'll depend by what we write. So Charsu's normally busy. Tony. What? Semicolon. Ibon. This, this week. Ibon Chunen. So Ibon Chu means this week. But as for this week, so this is probably going to be at, but. 이번 주는 시간이 많이 있어요. 철수 is normally, he's always normally <coughs> busy. 바쁘더니 이번 주는 this week, as for this week, 시간이 많이 있어요. There is a lot of time, literally. But more naturally, he has a lot of time. So Charsu is normally busy, but this week he has a lot of time. And that surprises me. You know, he's normally busy, but I realized this week he has a lot of time. It surprises me. Like, hey, he's normally busy, but this week he has a lot of time. 
So that surprises me. Now this Tony, here it is, it's a personal experience. So you have personally experienced seeing Tarsu be normally very busy. So Tarsu comes into work every day. He's always at his office and always at his desk working. He's normally busy. And I know that personally. So what comes after is going to be contrasted with this. It's going to be something different than the sentence. And it surprised me. So Tarsu is always busy and, or Tarsu is always busy, but this week he has a lot of time. And that surprised me. He has a lot of time because I normally see him busy all the time. That is our first example of how to use Tony. So remember, it just shows a contrast between two sentences when the second sentence surprises you and the first sentence is something that you personally have a uh, confirmation of. You personally have some sort of witness of it because you personally heard it or seen it for yourself. So let's take a look at the sentence for another minute, for another second, and I'm going to erase it right after I look at the chat. Okay. Actually, we use papunde. No, papunde is different. Papunde is a different meaning. So we'll talk about that next. Papunde, uh, the difference between using te and just dif and difference between di between using toni. One is toni has more uses than just than de. The other thing is toni also emphasizes it's a personal experience. If you were to just say papunde, it doesn't show that you have a personal experience of that. It just says he normally is busy. Maybe you thought he's busy. He's actually not. You know, you could say papunde if the person is busy or not, just if you think they are. You're saying, oh, he's busy. But toni means you personally know because you've seen him, you know how busy he is. And you're surprised. Whereas the papunde shows no sort of extra surprise. You can say, 철수가 원래 바쁜데 이번 주는 시간이 많이 써요. Normally he's busy, but this week he has a lot of time. But that surprise meaning comes from toni. So you lose that when you just switch to te. So it's not the same form. Um, the other thing I should say is also just like torago, you're not going to use this sort of surprise meaning when talking about yourself most of the time. This one though is a bit trickier. There are times when you can use toni when you're talking about something that you did yourself, but most of the time, to keep it simple, we can talk, maybe I'll go over an example of how you can use it in a bit. But to keep it simple, only use toni with other people, not for yourself. Just to make sure that you're actually expressing surprise properly. Not, you're, that you're not expressing surprise at yourself unless the context warrants that. So there could be cases where something you did something, but you got a different result than what you expected when you're talking about yourself. But you have to be careful about that. If you were to say, 내가 or 제가 I 원래 바, 바쁘더니 Normally I was always busy, I recall, but now this week I have a lot of time. It can sound a bit awkward when you're surprised about yourself that you're normally busy and now you have free time because you know your own schedule. But there could be times when it could be appropriate, but we'll save that for a little bit later. Just use Tony with second and third person, meaning other people. So you or he or she, like that. Okay, let's do one more example. And I want you guys to do this one. I know this, the, this week and last week have been much higher level of classes than we normally do. So I'm just trying to give as many examples as possible to make sure you guys can get it. You know, normally my lessons will be like, let's conjugate the yo form. Let's uh, make basic sentences. But today it's like, let's suffer and learn torago and toni, you know, fully intermediate forms. So, but anyway, I mean, a lot of people have asked me to do more intermediate stuff and I would like to do more intermediate stuff too. I think I'd like to cover the whole spectrum of Korean levels and not only beginners, um, but also beginners, but just not only beginners. Okay, let's do this next sentence to get, uh, together. Last summer was hot. Last summer was also hot. Okay, let me, I'll write this down. This is a bit longer. Last summer, last year summer, okay, last year summer, well, just to help you with the word. Last year summer was also hot and or but, whatever you want to translate, can be either. 
This summer is even hotter. So, okay, I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna help you through this one. If you already think you know it, go ahead and give it a try. But um, even, first of all, actually, let's go start here. Last year, so last year, summer, Changnyan, let's go with this, Changnyan, last year, Yoram for summer, hot, so Topta. This summer is gonna be Ibon for this, this, Ibon, Yoram, even hotter. In Korean, they use Oops, started that wrong. Horshin. Horshin. Horshin means even more so. So you could say Horshin something or Horshin to something if you want. That just means even more. It's like even hotter. Horshin do topta means even hotter. So last summer was also hot. Yeah, last summer was hot. But this summer is even hotter. Or it could be last summer was hot and this summer is even hotter. Depending on how you want to translate it, both work. So in this sentence, we have contrast. We have contrast. Sorry, not contrast. We have contrast. So last summer was hot, but, oh, here's the contract. This summer is even hotter. So there's our contrast. Last summer was hot. I personally experienced it because I was there. Yeah, last summer. Oh, man, I recall that was really hot. And we have a realization of something something that you didn't expect. So I didn't expect it. Last summer was so hot and I didn't expect and this summer is even hotter. It surprised me. I didn't expect that it would be even hotter. So that's the meaning of the sentence. So go ahead and try to make this using this form. I know I've only given you one example. So uh, if you guys don't get this right, don't feel too bad yet. Let's see. Calgary TV, that's kind of high level. Yes, uh, this is kind of high. It is an intermediate level, although it could be advanced level depending on how what levels you're grading yourself as. 작년 여름도 덥다니 덥더니 이번 여름은 더 더워요. Okay, nice, Ryu Patterson. 지난 여름도 덥더니 이번 여름은 더 덥네요. Okay, okay, not not quite the words I had suggested using, but yeah, you can you can go off like that. 작년 여름도 덥더니 이번 여름은 훨씬 더워요. Uh, you wrote 월신 Emerilis. Just a typo there. 작년 여름, 여름에 덥다니 이번 여름 훨씬 더워요. Oh, yeah, I see you wrote it there too. Okay, okay. Um, 지난 여름 would be like past summer, the past summer, but we're saying last year's summer, so 작년, specifically last year. How many books do you have? Uh, I have five right now, four through my website. I have three, three textbooks and a workbook, so four. And then I have a new book with Talk To Me in Korean that's on their website, The Common Mistakes Korean Learners Make. That's the top, most common 100 common Korean mistakes for beginners and intermediate levels. 작년 여름, oh, Troy Bolton, you wrote 여름 이도. You want to remove the E since that E would be a subject marker. 덥더니 이번 여름이 훨씬 더 덥거든요. Okay, or except for remove, you want to remove the E, but other than that, you're good, Troy. 작년 여름 덥더니 이번 년, not 이번 년, but... 이번 년, they say 올해, for this year. 작년 여름도 덥더니, 이번 여름 훨씬 더 덥네. Okay, nice. 작년 여름에는 덥더니, 이번 여름에도 훨씬 더 더워요. 작년 여름이 덥다. Okay, yeah. I mean, there's, there's other ways you could say this. Let me give you one answer so that you guys can just, in case you want to write something down for the future. Um, I need space. Changnyan, so last year, Yoram, Do, so also last year's summer, also, Topda, so was hot, so Topdoni. You don't need Toottoni or anything like that, just Topdoni. So last year's summer was hot. Okay, what's the contrast? So last year's summer was hot on one hand, and the contrast is. Well, this year's summer is even hotter. So, 이번, this one. Uh, 여름은 훨씬, so much more, 더 덥다. And you, you know, you could add other things to this sentence to make it more alive. But we're just working, we're just kind of focusing on the grammar for 더니 for here. So, 작년 여름도, so last year's summer, 덥더니. 
Last year's summer was hot. Contrast with 이번 여름은 훨씬 더 덥다. So last summer was hot, but this summer is even hotter. And last summer, last year's summer, I was there. It was really hot. But what surprised me was 이번 여름은 훨씬 더 덥다. So kind of, I hope this kind of illustrates that the, the meaning that 더니 gives to this uh, sentence when it's used as a connector. So it's like contrast. This surprised me. And this was something I personally experienced. So that's how this form is used here. Let's see, is this good or should we go on to the next one? Oh yeah, let's do another one. And we are okay on time. We're actually not, but whatever. Let's do another sentence. It's okay if we go over an hour and a half because I really want you guys to get this form. Like, like I said, this is a really commonly messed up form. Com I shouldn't say messed up, commonly misused form among in intermediate and sometimes advanced spe Korean speakers because it has more than one usage. Uh, let's do another one. Let's say, oh yeah, last week, it kept raining last week, but today, I'll just, I'll just write this one out because this would require giving you a lot of different verbs. Oh, we got a donation. Who's that? New member, Victoria Lewis. Welcome, Victoria. Victoria L. Welcome to the family. I keep writing on my finger every time I put these pens away. Okay, I'm just gonna give you guys this sentence because I would want you, I would want you to do it, but I feel like I'd have to give you a lot of verbs to do it. And you know what? Let's do it. I'll have you guys do it for fun, and I'll give, I'll just give you the next one then. See, not. Oh, oh sorry. It's not a case of people. Okay. Last week it kept raining, but today the sky is bright. Last week it kept raining. Or you might just say, you know, it was raining last week. It was raining last week, but this week the sky is, let's do clear actually. The sky is clear. So to say the sky, actually let's start with last week. Last week is 지난주. If you know these words, go ahead and give it the try. 지난주 kept, they use 계속 as an adverb. 계속 means continually. 계속, raining is 비가 오다. Oops, I wrote that a little weird. 비가 오다, to rain. Literally, rain comes. But this week, 이번 주, sky, 하늘, Clear, makta, which is spelled as that, makta. Gotta just check the chat over here, make sure the stream's still going fine. Yay, everyone's here. Okay, so last week it kept raining, but this week the sky is clear. How would you say this sentence? My name is actually Celeste, but yeah, thanks. Oh! Celeste. Okay, let's read this. See what you guys have got. I see you accidentally hit enter too early. Okay. Okay. 하늘, your 라늘, 하늘, 하늘이 맑아요. Okay, okay, except for the, the, <laughs> the typo. 지난주에 비가 오더니. Oh yeah, it kept raining. You don't need to say it rained, but you could say it rained last week. But anyway, the idea is that you could use 왔더니 or 오더니. We'll talk about that. 지난주 계속 비가 오더니. 이번 주는 하늘이 맑아요. Nice, nice, ocean discovery. Uh, let's see. 지난주 비가 계속 오더니 이번 주는 하늘이 맑았다. This, this, okay, if it was, if, if you want to say the sky was clear, then yeah, 하늘이 맑았다. Okay, it's not wrong. 지난주는 비가 계속 오더니 이번 주. Flora, Flora SD, you want to say 이번. If you just say 이주, that means two weeks. 이, 주, 주, weeks. To say this week, they say 이번, 이번. As I wrote here, 이번, 지난주, 이번 주. 
지난주에 비가 계속 더니 Dixie's attic, you, you forgot to put O. 하늘이 맑습니다. Other, other than, for, uh, you just want to put the O 더니, but other than that, it's fine. Okay. All right. I think, yeah, I, I was pretty happy. You guys, you guys do pretty good. Let me give you, let me give you an answer you can write down for review for yourself. Okay, let's just do it exactly as I have here. 지난 주는 계속 so continually kept 비가 오더니 so it kept raining, raining. Not it was. Not it rained, so it kept raining. Uh, 이번 주는, or just 오늘은, today, whatever you want to say. 하늘이 맑아요. So, last week, as for last week, it keeps raining, I recall. So I recall last week it kept raining. And then what am I going to contrast that with? So on one hand, I recall that last week it kept raining. On the other hand, you know, contrast. So now we're contrasting. On the other hand, it's what surprised me was this week or today or, you know, just right now or whatever. The sky is really bright right now. Last week, I recall last week that it just kept raining, right? But right now, um, it surprises me because it's really clear. That's the meaning that you get with this tony form. You got it? Let me give you one more sentence. Hopefully I'm giving you enough sentences to kind of get the feeling of all these forms. Uh, let's say, okay, let's do Yangi. I think Charsu's had enough torture. Let's do Charsu's best friend or girlfriend or I don't know, whatever. It's a girl. Yangi do. So Yangi also wanted to go to the wedding. 결혼식, wedding ceremony. 식에, so I don't have any room. 가고 싶다고 하더니. So, so, so far we have Yangi also to the wedding ceremony. 가고 싶다고. So she also said that she wanted to go to the wedding ceremony. 하더니 is just 말하더니, so said. So 다고하다 is to speak, to say. So she said she wants to go to the wedding too. So Yongyi also said she wants to go to the wedding on one hand. And I recall, because I heard her say this. If you're going to say this sentence already, it has to mean you heard her directly. Not that someone else told you she wanted to go or something like that. So she directly, you have a personal experience of hearing something that happened or seeing something that happened. In this case, you personally heard her say, I want to go to the wedding too. So you heard her say that directly. But what surprised you was, what comes next? All of a sudden, so literally suddenly, but you know, all of a sudden is also okay. So, but, all the, but then all of a sudden, so this is another, this is, this might be a new, a new verb for some of you. 연락이 안 되다. 연락 means contact. 연락이 안 되다 means literally contact does not become or something is not contacted. To be not contacted. You can think of it like a passive verb, to be uncontacted. So in English, we would just say, there is no contact. I cannot contact them. So literally, there is no contact, but we would say naturally, 연락이 안 되다 means to be unable to contact someone. Youngi said she wanted to go to the wedding too, but now all of a sudden I can't even contact her. Or she didn't contact me. However you want to say it, literally uncontacted, does not, is not contacted. So, you know, she was saying she wanted to come to the wedding too. You know, maybe you're at, you're with your friends, you're at the wedding. She said she wanted to go to the wedding. I heard her say that, but what surprised me was all of a sudden I can't get in touch with her. You know, 
Must have been a lie. Kind of like that. She said she wanted to go to the wedding. I heard her. I recall that. But surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, so all of a sudden, you know, can't, no one can get a hold of her. Like that. So that's the meaning you have with this form. So I'm giving you a bunch of examples to illustrate how pony is used and what feeling it gives to your sentence if you use it. Okay, let's do one more example and then we're going to move on to the second use of pony. <clears throat> I'll still try to finish before four o'clock, but I can't make any promises because <clears throat> I would rather you guys understand it instead of give a lesson where you still, where you don't get it after spending an hour and a half. So, okay. Uh, actually, never mind. Let's skip this sentence because this is a dumb sentence. Uh, if you want the sentence, you can, I have some other sentences I'm not doing from today, which are in the outline. So I actually don't want to do the sentence. It's not really that good. Okay. Let's just go on to the next, <laughs> let's go on to the next meaning. Okay. So you, hopefully you got that first meaning. The first meaning I think is actually harder to get. This first meaning I've just done, I think is a bit of a harder one to understand because that's the one I see most people misuse is this usage of Tony to mean <clears throat> contrast, kind of like with the te form. The second meaning of Tony is the one that's easier to use. So if you guys have made it this far, we've got a little bit of a downhill here. So you get, a, it gets a little bit easier now. So you get to go down a little bit. The second usage of Tony is as also a sentence connector. So nothing new here. It connects two sentences. Okay. It's also something that uh, you have a past experience. Okay, nothing new. And what is different though is this one. This is similar to <clears throat> the Saul form because of, in that it shows, it means because, because something happened, a cause and a result. The salt form is used as a cause and a result form. So it shows because of something, this is the result. And that's also similar to what the Nika form does. Kind of why you should be familiar with how to use Nika. This is where the Toni form really shows off that it's a combination of tall and Ni. Tall, past tense, ni, because, because of this past action. So this is the form that shows that off the most. And that's why I think this form is easier to use and you'll see it even more common, more often than you'll see the other one. Although they're both, both uses are quite common. This one is easier to put together. So this has more of a because feeling, but you might be already wondering, okay, well, how is it different than just saying saw or nika for past tense, right? This form, shows more of a more important, a larger, a grander, let's say a larger result. By that, I mean, you have a cause, you have something caused something to happen. <clears throat> well, what happened was actually bigger. <clears throat> like it really caused this to happen. Instead of just like, oh, I ate a lot of pizza and my stomach hurts. No mu mani bogoso. Because I ate a lot of food, pizza, mani also, pega payo. Because I ate a lot of pizza, my stomach hurts. That's just straightforward. This one would be like, because I ate a lot of pizza, oh, now my stomach hurts. It's a larger result. So this one is stronger, a stronger way of showing that um, <clears throat> it was a, I would say that there was a result of something happening. Uh, if I can think of an easier way to put that into words, this puts more emphasis on the result of what happened. <clears throat> so let's do, oh, and this one also, there's a good translation for this. If you want to think of a good translation, so you have a, so you have first part of sentence a, and then you have, and now because of that, b. So A and now because of A, B. So it kind of brings more of the emphasis toward B in this way. So you say, oh, I ate a lot of food and now my stomach hurts. So now, like, you know, it's, it's a bigger result. That's what kind of what I mean by bigger results. So I know it's kind of hard to translate 
<coughs> sorry. I know it's hard, kind of hard to explain what that means, like, oh, it shows a bigger result. But that's kind of what it does. It gives more of an emphasis to the result that happens. So A happens in the past. I remember it happening, or I heard it, or saw it. And now, because of A, B. It doesn't have to be a good, doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could also be a good thing. But you're, there's more emphasis on the result. Okay, let me check the chat for a second. Are you guys doing okay? Let me just ask you this. I, I haven't checked up on the chat in a while. Are you guys still doing okay? I see I don't have as many viewers as when, as uh, the last couple lessons, maybe because this is more of an intermediate level. That's my guess. I'm not okay, I'm hungry. Okay. I'm surviving. Yes. I know uh, when I when I put this up for voting, I'm like, well, let's see how my viewers like a more advanced lesson. So we'll see. OK, so this has the meaning of like blah, 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 A. And now because of that, B. Let me give you one example first. So besides that, the way that it works is exactly the same as the other form. So you also use you know, descriptive verbs with present tense and action verbs can be either, um, you know, like that. However, um, you can also use this for yourself. You can also use this for yourself since this is not showing some sort of like surprise at what's happening. Like you're not showing like it was, it was different than what you expected and it surprised you. Now you're simply just saying, this is what happened. I was there when it happened because of this event. And now this. So you can also use this one with yourself. So that's kind of where the common mistake comes in is that people use this form because <clears throat> about themselves. And they think, oh yeah, I can use because I can use Tony with myself because I used it with this meaning here. But actually they're, they're, using, they're using this second meaning with themselves to mat to in a sentence where it should be the first meaning, meaning like something surprised you, you know, this happened, but this or and this. So they, they kind of switch them up in how they're used. So just know that the second meaning where it means because is okay to use it about yourself. But the first meaning is not most of the time. It's not. So that's, that's where I hear some people mess this one up. So let's do our first sentence. Charsu Shiga. 만든 김밥. So the kimbap that Charsu made. Well, I ate the kimbap that Charsu made, and now because of that, um, I have a stomach ache. My stomach hurts. So, Tarsu Siga Mandan Kimbap. The Kimbap Tarsu made. I ate it. Bogotoni. I ate it. And as a result, because I ate it, now, and now, ah, and now, Pega Apayo. So, this is a focus on the result. More of a focus on the result. Instead of just saying, Kimbaber, Bogoso. Because I ate the kimbap, my stomach hurts. No, no. I ate the I ate the kimbap, and as a result, and now my stomach hurts. So I ate charsu's kimbap, and now my stomach hurts. That's the meaning that you get. So, morotto ni. Personally, recall eating it because I, well, I, it happened, and I, I'm talking about myself here. I personally recall eating the kimbap that charsu made, and now because of that, my stomach hurts. So that's the basic way that this second usage is used. And that's all there is to it. Let me give you guys an example that you can try. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can do one of these with you. Okay. I worked until late and now I got a cold. All 
I worked late. They would say until late in Korean. I worked late and now I caught a cold. So I'll tell you what these words are. So worked until late. It, you can go ahead and try it if you know these words. Until late is 늦게 까지. Literally until late as an adverb. 늦게 까지. Work is 일하다. And now, so that's our, this is going to be our Tony form here. And now, da, 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 Tony. I caught a cold. To catch a cold, they say 감기, which is a cold. 감기에 걸리다. To catch a cold. So I worked until late, and now I caught a cold. Or in more natural English, you know, yeah, I worked late, and now I got a cold. Like that. Or I got a cold because I worked late. Yeah, I got a cold because I worked late. Like that. Go ahead and give it a try and then I'll give you an answer. See if see what you can do. Oh, you wrote 길렸어요. And Mary Liz. Oh yeah, okay, so you fixed it. Nice, nice. Nice save. 늦게까지 일했더니 감기에 걸려요. You would say 감기에 걸렸어요. Not I catch not that I worked until late and I catch a cold. <clears throat> and now I catch a cold, but now and now I caught a cold. So you're saying I worked until late and now I caught a cold. Not and now I catch a cold. You're not doing something now, you did something as a result of working late. So past tense. 늦게까지 일 아, Tiffany stay. Remember it's the verb stem. It's not conjugated verb, so it's not 일해. But try again. Oh, I see you fixed it. Oh, you already fixed it before I even said anything. 일하더니. Nice, nice. 늦게까지 일했더니 감기에 걸려, 걸렸어요. Flora SD, you're just mi missing 걸렸어요. 늦게까지 일을 했더니 감기에 걸렸어요. Nice. 제가 늦게까지 일을 했더니 감기에 걸렸어요. Perfect zone in. Nice, nice. Okay. Yeah, you got 늦게 까지 일 or 일 or just 일 Let's do this. 일 했더니 니? That's good. Sure, sure, there we go. Let's do it like that. 했더니 감기에 걸렸어요. So let's explain how this works again. So until late worked. I worked until late. I personally experienced working until late. And as a result of that, and now I caught a cold directly as a result of this, or just more, you know, loosely translated. I caught a cold because I worked until late, but don't translate this as because from English. You can translate it back back to English this way, but don't translate it from English as because, or else you're going to use this form when it's not something you personally have a experience with or something you personally witnessed. And when it's not, you don't want to emphasize the uh, ending action. So just don't translate it as because from English, but know that the meaning literally is here because. So because I worked until late, as a result, I caught a cold or I worked until late and now as a result, and now because of that, I caught a cold. But I think this usage is much easier because it's harder to mess up than the first usage. Let's do, okay, we did that one. Okay, I made, oh, let's actually, let's do this one. Let's do a sentence about someone else. So actually, no, let's do that next. Okay, first we're gonna do another I did something. So I exercised for two hours. 제가 두 시간 동안 for two hours, so during two hours, a period of two hours, 운동, exercise, I exercised and I personally did it and as a result or I personally experienced that you know personally saw it or heard it so personally experienced that 
And as a result of that, Tariye Himi Opsoyo. So Himi Opta literally means to have no power, to have no strength. So I have no strength in my legs, literally. But this is how you'd say my legs are dead. Like in, in English, this is how you'd say, oh, my, now I can't, you know, my legs, my legs are totally dead. So Tariye Himi Opsoyo. I have no strength in my legs. Like, oh, my legs are like rubber now. So Tega Tushigan Tongan Undongar Hetoni. So I exercise for two hours, and as a result of that, I can't stand up like that. That's kind of what you'd say. Tariye Himi Opsoyo. Oh, like my legs are dying. Like, oh, like that. I have no strength in my legs. Let's do another. I prepared a few examples to kind of help show this off. Um, okay, I drank, okay, let's say, Akka. Akka is just recently, like just a second ago, just, just now. Akka. Jan. Salty. Umsigur. Uh, mani. Mogotoni. Oh, I should make something clear. When you're using Tony for this form to show because, most of the time, if it's past tense, sorry, I should say, I should say it this way. If you're using Tony to talk about something you did, you, so I, by that I mean I. So if you were saying, Tega, Tonen, I. I did something. Most of the time, it will be used with past tense. And if you're not talking about yourself, most of the time it is not in past tense. So if you were talking about someone else, it wouldn't use the past tense. Most of the time. It is most often the, what is it? I is most often used with past tense. And second person or third person, you know, you or he or her, is most often just used with present tense. So that's another trick. I shouldn't say trick. That's another kind of rule of using Tony with this meaning to mean because. Is that if you're talking about yourself, this is typically in the past tense. If you're talking about someone else, it is not in the past tense. So if you see the past tense used with Tony, you can assume the person, the speaker, is talking about themselves and not, not about someone else. So, 아까 짠 음식을 많이 먹었더니. So, I, it's not him or, him or her. I had eaten a lot. I had eaten a lot of salty food just now, just recently. 아까, just a little bit earlier. And as a result of that, now, and now, 지금, water, 물을 많이, So I drank, uh, sorry, recently, Akka, just a while about, just a while ago. Jan salty, salty food. Mani motoni. So I just ate a lot of salty food. And now, as a result of that, Sigum right now, Mani I want to drink a lot of water. So I ate a, I just ate a lot of spicy food. Sorry, not spicy. I just ate a lot of salty food and now I want to drink a lot of water. So that's what the meaning of this form is. Because, as a result of, and the note I said is just, you know, something to keep, keep an eye out is that if you're talking about yourself, use past tense. If you're talking about someone else, use present tense. Uh, let me do one more example of this form. Oh yeah, this is the one I think you guys can do this. Okay. Billy. Actually, I want you to replace Billy with your own name. So your own name here, and then E or Ka. And then because you like Korean so much, you became a Korean teacher. Because well, let me just write this really quick. Like Korean so much, 
he or she became a Korean teacher. Let me check to see who donated and then you guys can go ahead and give this a try. Oops, dropped the pen. I have to throw away this pen anyway. Get a new one. Let's see. Oh, Jess Bridges. I watched advanced lessons three times with no pencil. Then I tried. Nice, nice. Jess Bridges. Thanks for the donation. Yeah, this is a lesson where, um, like, I can always tell how hard a lesson is going to be to learn. Like, even though I know these topics, like, I can always tell how long it's, how difficult a topic is by how long it takes me to prepare the lesson for it. So like something like Torago, it took several hours to put it for, to prepare it. Even though Torago is typically not considered an advanced form, the way it's used is quite advanced, I'd say. It's quite intermediate. And then this topic alone, Toni, also took a long time for me to compress down to get it as short as I can. So that tells me like, yes, this is going to be more of a difficult topic. Okay. 한국어 좋아했더니 한국어 선생님이 됐어요. 안나가 한국어를 좋아하더니 한국어의 선생님이 됐어요. Okay, okay. 한국어를 엄청 좋아하던, 좋아하더니 한국, 아, 한국어 선생님 or 한국말 선생님. 한국어 선생님. But not 한국. That would be Korea teacher, like the country. 보라가 한국어를 좋아했더니 한국어 선생님이 됐어요. Okay, okay. Tiffany. Tiffany 너무, 너무 좋더니. If you say Tiffany가 너무 좋더니, it means I love Tiffany so much. But you also put Hanguk Sansenim, which would be Korea teacher, not Korean. So you want to do Hanguko. Doa ga Hanguko Numu. You should write Nomu, not Numu. And then Chuahada is the spell is spelled incorrectly for Chuahada. So you should have the uh, the H sound at the bottom of Chu. Chuahada. Chuahadoni. Chuahetoni if it's yourself. Hanguko Sansenim is so. Celeste ga. Ah, Celeste. <laughs> 한국어를 너무 너무 많이 좋아했더니 한국어 선생님이 선생님이 됐어요. So if it's become a teacher, it's 선생님이 선생님이 되다. So to become a teacher, so 선생님이 됐어요. For a Celeste. Oh, I see you. <laughs> and of course, after after I explain something, I just look at the chat and two lines down, you already fixed it. So okay, sorry. I should just read the chat. Perfect. Floor SD. Perfect sentence. I... <laughs> okay. Yes. So because someone likes Korean so much... Ah, I wrote on myself. This cap has... I've written on myself like a bunch of times because this cap keeps falling off. It's like it, you have to push it really hard to put it on. So because of that, I don't want to put it on and take it off all the time because it's just really tight. And it just keeps writing on my hand. Okay. Uh, let's say this. So whatever name you have, I'll just say Billy. Billy ga, not me, but just say Billy. So some guy named Billy. Billy ga hanguk order. Kuroke, so so much or whatever. You know, I'll just use kuroke for this one. 그렇게 좋아하더니 Oops, oh, I started writing 하더 at the same time. 하더니 한국어 선생님이 된 됐군요. So, this is another thing I wanted to point out is in my sentence, I'm going to end it with 대군, 군, 군요. Do you guys remember 군? I talked about 군 in a previous lesson when I talked about verb endings. It was one of my first live streams. 군요 is a verb ending that shows surprise, that shows um, not so much, not just surprise, but realization of something, that you've just realized something like, hey, I realized Billy became a Korean. I mean, he really likes Korean, and wow, I realized he just became a Korean teacher. This 군요 form will often appear together with Tony. But um, 
this form that I, this sentence that I just gave you was kind of a, I don't think the best way to word this. It was kind of a trick. I kind of gave you guys a trick question. This Tony here that we just used is actually not the second one that we've just been talking about. I actually gave you a sentence from the closer than almost to the first set, almost to the first meeting that we used. Tony, the first meeting that we used, just a quick refresher, Tony for the first meeting is contrasting two sentences. So something, something, something that I have personal experience of hearing or, or seeing it and or but this other thing happened which surprised me, right? Billy really likes Korean and what surprised me is and he became a Korean teacher and I realized that, wow, it surprised me. You know, I'm just adding this to show extra surprise. Or, or if you look at it the second way, because Billy really likes Korean, because 좋아하더니 한국어 선생님이 됐군요. Because he likes Korean, he became a Korean teacher. So depending on the context of the sentence, depending on the sentence, it could seem like it means either or, right? It could kind of seem like it means, well, Billy likes Korean and what surprised me is that he became a Korean teacher. Or Billy likes Korean and because of that, and now he became a Korean teacher. So these meanings, these different meanings can kind of seem like they have an overlap. In some cases, you can think of the sentences as meaning both like and, but, or because, depending on the sentence. So this is an example of when it can kind of seem like it overlaps. I mean, you might say, oh, it looks like it's a little bit more of the second one because, you know, it really seems like more of a cause and effect, right? But other times it might not seem so clear. It might seem like it could be either. So that's why it's important to know the literal meaning of this as because. So literally, if you think of these as meaning because of something as a direct result of, you'll usually get the right meaning in your head, even if you're not, even if you're missing that, oh, maybe it's actually a contrasting sentence or something like that. Um, so yeah, sometimes these can kind of seem like the, the two meanings overlap for the two meanings, but yeah, this one's a little bit more like the second one, but it could also be seen as the first one too. Like Billy really likes Korean and I wasn't, it was surprised me, you know, as uh, contrasted with that, he became a Korean teacher that surprised me, but you know, just kind of giving you a trick, a little bit of a tricky example, but you guys were fine. You still got it. So I'm glad. So yeah, just keep an eye out that you might see kunyo as an ending used together with toni. I would write that down in your notes that kunyo is commonly used with this form because kunyo also shows that you're realizing something. Okay. And we got enough time for one more example. Do we want to make kimbap or do we want to study every day? Let's study every day. Okay. Hangugoder Mail Kungu Hetani Hold on, it's like hot in here. Let me see if I can like turn on the air conditioner. Yes, I can. Okay. Um so Hangugoder Meir every day Kongbu Hetani. So I studied Korean every day, and as a result of that, Hangugoder Wanjun Talhage Tesoyo. Okay, so I studied Korean every day. And as a result of studying Korean every day, I became Wanjun, completely, extremely good at Korean. So I studied Korean every single day, and as a result, I became extremely good at Korean. So that's the final sentence that we have for today. Just gonna leave this up on the board for a minute so you can kind of write it down, think about it, and I'm gonna look at the chat for a moment. And then we have some advanced notes for everyone who stuck around till the end of the lesson. You deserve a good meal. I'm considering starting a riot. How dare you drop the kimbap? Okay, fine. You guys want the kimbap? I'm gonna make the kimbap, you know, I, I didn't wanna do this, but 
You asked for it. I'm gonna make the kimbap so spicy, so spicy that no one's gonna eat it. So here we go. Take off kimbap. Oh, and you you also notice a lot of these are. Most of these tend to be used with talking about yourself, but that's not a requirement. And just you'll see a lot of these tend to be like I did something and that this happened as a result of it. But it's it's also okay with other people. Tega kimbap. No mu. So too much. Mepke. So too spicy. Mandrotani. So I made the kimbap too spicy, and as a result of that, and now, amudo an mogosoyo. Oops, a little weird there. Okay, so I made the kimbap too spicy. Tega kimbap er nomu too much mepke spicy mepke mandir da means to make something spicy. So they use mepke as an adverb. So I made kimbap too spicy. I remember, I recall, I recall that I made the kimbap too spicy. And now, as a result of that, amudo an mogoseo. No one, amudo. Amudo, remember, is only used with negative verbs. So you wouldn't say nobody went by saying amudo bogoseo, nobody ate it. It's, amu, it's always used with a negative. So an mogoseo. Amudo an mogoseo. No one ate it. I made the kimbap so spicy and now no one ate it. As a result of that, no one ate it. So that's the meaning we have here. Hope you guys are happy. Got your kimbap. You can't even enjoy it. Have your kimbap and eat it too. I'm Jamaican. We live for spicy food. Nice. I've never had, ever had any Jamaican food before, but I'm curious. I'm not Texan or Hispanic or Jamaican, but I also live for spicy food. I also like spicy food. I think a lot of people have who have had spicy food before who like, especially people who grew up eating spicy food, you just want spicy food sometimes. You sometimes just like feel like, oh, I just want something spicy, you know. What was the poll? What was the poll? Was that, should we start a riot over kimbap? Okay, well, I did the kimbap. You can't, I guess you could riot because it's too spicy, but at least I did the sentence. Okay. So now let's do a little bit of advanced notes before we finish. So uh, the main lesson's over, but I did want to give some extra notes. And I'll try to keep this really quick because we're already over the lesson time, but it's okay. Um, I, I already gave you one of these notes already. I'm just reminding you. Anytime you see tall, it's used for showing, showing something that you personally experienced, you personally saw it, you personally heard it. Um, but know that there is no simple ending that is tall. Like you're not going to see like, like you'll see ha dorago, ha dorago yo, you'll, you'll see ha dora, but don't think like, oh, there, there's going to be like ha do, there is no ha do, there's no tall ending by itself. This is a, what would it be, auxiliary, auxiliary supportive ending, I don't know the t official term for it. It's not used by itself, it's used in tandem with other endings. So you will not see tall used by itself like that. So although this form has that meaning, it's not its own form. Another thing is you might see another similar form. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I mentioned that torago is not going to be used with your own experiences because you're not going to say, I think I recall doing something that I clearly did. If you wanted to say like, I recall that I went to the store, you would just say, I remember going, I remember that I went to the store or I did go to the store or I think I went to the store like that. You don't use Torago with your own experiences. Now I mentioned this when I first taught Torago, but there could be an exception. Uh, let me give you an example. Canada, so here's Canada. Canada, eh? Kanjogi, so I have never been to Canada. Kanjogi opta, I have never been. I never have the. I've never had the experience of going. Sure, I thought. Aranunde, so this is more of a uh, definitely an intermediate sentence. So, 
if you're not at least an intermediate level, never use Todago with yourself because you have to have other, a lot of other grammar knowledge to even use Todago by yourself. I mean, not by yourself. In order to use Todago about yourself, you have to know a lot of other intermediate or even advanced grammar to do that. And it's not common. I'm just trying to give you an example of when it would be acceptable. So, I thought I had never been to Canada before. Ponika. So again, you have to learn Ponika. Now here's the Nika, here's this knee again as well. I looked at photos and and now this knee, this Nika ending, you know, it means literally because, but this Nika ending also by itself, or ni, is the same as what's used in Toni. And this has a second a secondary meaning as well, which I haven't talked about yet, but Nika also has a secondary meaning of and then something happened after something. So something happened, and then, you know, this happened. So, 사진을 보니까, so looking at photos, and then, so I was looking at photos, and then, when I was young, Sorry, no, it's tight. So here, yeah, this is a this is a completely advanced sentence. It has a lot. Look at all these forms. Look at all these advanced forms it has. So here, kanjagi opta. That's that's just you know beginner. Juranande. That's intermediate form. Ponika. That's intermediate. Kasotorago. So now we have a double past, which is maybe beginner like a low intermediate form. Canada kanjagi omnen juranande. I thought. I had never been to Canada before. 사진을 보니까, but then looking at photos, and now I realized, so something happened. 어렸을 때, when I was young, 가서, I had gone. 돌아고, I recalled that I had gone when I was younger. So now we have past tense. 가, so instead of just 갔더라고, I, I recall I went when I was young. Now we have I had gone. So it, you could also say 갔더라고요, I recall I went. But in here, we're just using kasotoro. I had, I recall that I had, had gone, you know, double past tense. Torago. So this, it's a torago about your own experience that you recall, but it is acceptable because you're giving a real reason why recalling something would be a surprise to you. So you, I recall it and it surprised me. I didn't know, but then looking at photos, I guess, you know, I went when I was young. So that's the only situation when it's okay to use Torago for your own experiences is when it actually legitimately would surprise you that you had done something. And in this case, it could be, you know, I thought I never went to Canada, but then looking at, I looked at some photos and I realized, yeah, I guess I had gone there before. There's your advanced sentence of today. Um, it's not too advanced, but this would be, I would classify this as a lower advanced, mid, mid advanced, maybe lower advanced level. So if you can understand this sentence without any problems, you you might be lower advanced at least. So one more thing. So we're not done. Another bit of uh, advanced notes. Oh my gosh, this 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 is just terrible. This eraser. I swear these erasers last like three hours. Okay, one more is you might see another form. Another form you might see is tall kun. Yo, togunyo. This isn't. This is a sentence ending. So this will not. This is not a connector. It's not like toni or torago. This is togunyo. You might say, what is togunyo? You know, I. You might sometimes see it. This is not a common ending. This is less common, but you might sometimes see it. It's the exact same meaning as torago. Torago yo. You could. You could see togun or togunyo. However, it is more emphasis that you've realized something. So now, torago normally has the meaning of you've realized something. And the kun ending, kun or kunyo, also has the meaning that you've realized something. So both of these normally mean that you realize something. Ah, mashitoraguyo. It was really good, and I realized that, and that surprised me, you know, a little bit surprising. Showing you're realizing it. Yeah, I realized it was really good. It surprised me. It was really good. Or, 
it was really good and it surprised me. So this is just a combination of this one with Cugno and it just has more of an emphasis on, on being surprised about something, but it's not so common. So know it, know that it exists, know that it just means toraguyo, and it's a little bit more emphatic. That's it. That's your other advanced form. Oh, and one more, one more. So you know Tony, but do you know Tony's friend? Ta Tony. <laughs> I'm just joking. Ta Doni. So you might see, oh, what's Ta Doni? Like, um, instead of Man Tony, you might see Man Ta Doni. So you might see, oh, is this a new form? Some brand new form, Ta Doni. How is it different? It's not. It is not even technically a different form. All it is, is plain form. It's a quoting form. Hada, so mar hada to say, toni. It's just shortened from the plain form which ends in ta, and then the quoting form, hadoni, from speaking. So it's just someone said, toni. Somebody says, manta, there are a lot. Man ta toni. It's just a combination of quoting form with toni. So that's that's it. So if you were to say um, man toni, that, that just means I personally experienced there were a lot of something, whatever. Toni man toni. Saram, sarami man toni. There were a lot of people because I went there and I saw lots of people standing in a crowd. Chincha, sarami chincha man toni. There are a lot of people there. Sarami chincha man ta toni. This is different. This is just I heard someone say that there are a lot. So, man ta ko, or you're quoting, mal hadoni. So, someone said, and I directly heard, I have the experience of hearing, personally hearing someone say that there were a lot of people. That's the difference. But it is, it is not a new form. It's just the quoting form. So, this is just a quote. So, this turns it into a quote. That's it. Oh, sorry. Not just ta, it's ta ku. But this is the, it's not included in here, but the quoting form normally is the quote, the plain form, ku marhada. But I just forgot to write ku here. Ku would be here too. So yeah, man ta go, ha, or mal hadora go. Man ta go, hadoni. You might also hear ta dora go. It's the same thing, just quoting. So that's all it is. Um, Let's see, before I check the chat again, I just want to let you know all of these outlines, as well as more sentences we didn't have time to go over today, are going to be on Patreon. So everyone who's a Patreon, the $1 Patreons, everyone gets access to these. And if you want to know what the next week's voting choices are going to be, join the Discord. And thanks for coming. Now I'm going to read the chat. So if you have any last minute questions, it's already four o'clock, but feel free to ask if you have any quick questions before we go. Thanks for coming. And again, thank you to our donors, Tater Tot, Ocean Discovery, Celeste, and Just Bridges. Zonin, I am confusion. Hi, confusion. I am dad. <laughs> I see like everyone left though. There were, there were twice as many people when we started than there are right now in the chat. And I'm, I, I guess I kind of expected that because while I was writing this lesson, I figured Toragu was like, you know, beginners can follow along with, along with Toragu. But Tony is like, it's intermediate. Like, you're not going to have a good time if you're not intermediate level with Tony. And Mary Liz, I won't stick around too hungry. My head hurts, so success. Nice. Yeah, it's not used that much. And I, I said that when I taught Togunyo. It's not used very much. You know, I have a mug that said, Daddy needs coffee. <laughs> what is buy? Uh, that, there is no just simple translation of buy. It depends what you mean. Um, you, you, if you just want to say good, if, it depends if you're in person with someone or online with someone or what the situation is. Because you could say, you know, 잘가, 잘가요, goodbye for your friend. You could say, you know, or they're staying, 잘 있어, 잘 있어요, 안녕히 계세요, if you're, if you're leaving in person. Online, you might just say, 다음에 또 봐요, 다음에 또 봐. You know, like what I say at the end of my videos. You could just say, thank you, 감사합니다. 
그럼 저 먼저 갈게요. I'll, I'll go first or anything. There's a bunch of different ways to do it, but there's not like a one simple translation for it because it all depends on the context. 가본 적이 있더라고요? Nope. You wouldn't use 도라고, as I mentioned a couple times during the stream, you wouldn't use 도라고요 with your own experiences. Can han be used as past tense? Um, it's a past tense adjective. And I did a live stream about changing action verbs into adjectives. So check that out. It's in my playlist on my channel. So you can learn about how to use han as past tense. Exactly, no adibs. No, I usually teach things in detail. Uh, Ji Hyun Kim in the chat is asking, why did I even teach togunyo if it's not commonly used? And I often go, I often let you guys know about a lot of grammar, um, regardless of how commonly used it is. So, for example, even though toragoyo uh, and tora are both used, you know, togunyo is not that uncommon. So it's like, why, why would you teach togunyo if it's not that common? Because you still see it. Even if you're not using it yourself, that doesn't mean you're not going to see it still. So a lot of this grammar is whether you use it is not important. You have to know what it means because other people are using this. You might be talking with the Korean person who's 40, 50 years old, and they might be using some expressions or some grammar that's not as common today or maybe incorrect today. But you should still know that even if you're not using it yourself. So that's why I let you guys know about grammar that like, you know, I'll tell you some grammar, I'll say it's not that common, but I still want you to know it. It's still useful to know it. Kind of like something I don't do on this channel is teach swears. I don't teach swearing. I don't teach too much slang here. Um, not that it's bad to know. I just, I want to keep my content family friendly, but you should also know that type of stuff in Korean. Even if you're not using it, you should be able to recognize it. So you should be able to know more Korean than you can use. I guess that's kind of obvious though. <laughs> yeah, I am read I read everything. <laughs> can Torago and Tony use with negative? Um, can you give me an example of what you mean by your question? Negative form. Yeah, yeah, you can use negative verbs with it too. I recall that someone didn't do something. Like that. Yeah, I recalled he didn't like it. Mashi optorago. It didn't taste good. Yeah, it's fine. Negatives are perfectly fine. As well as Tony. <laughs> Billy teaching swears. Yes, I will not go on this channel teaching swears. Although they are important. I'll just say that, but I'm not going to teach them. But yes, um, if you want to go learn swear words, go ahead and do it. Like, seriously, learn them, but don't use them because you'll really offend people. Like, not, I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. You'll really offend people if you're not careful with who you're using it to in the context. But you should know what they mean because some of them are extremely common. And you can't go, you can't go through Korean only learning the Korean that you're going to be using yourself. You need to be using the Korean that you're going to be exposed to. And that can be all sorts of things. Victoria Lewis. Oh, let me see. 한국에서 일할 줄 알았는데 I thought I would work in Korea. 다음 한국어를 배우니까 다음, I'm not sure what you mean by 다음, next, after that. 한국까지 이사했더라고요. You wouldn't, again, you would not use 더라고요 with, um, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what your sentence is, so I w I'll say no, it doesn't make sense, because I'm not sure what you mean by 다음 한국어를 배우니까. I'm not sure that, with that part of your sentence, how that fits in. I'm, I, maybe you're trying to say, I thought I would be working in Korea, but then I moved to Korea which no, wouldn't be any sort of um, surprise because you just said in that sentence you thought you would be going to Korea and then you can't be surprised that you then did go to Korea. So you wouldn't be able to use that sentence. But I would say if you don't get it yet, you're in the boat with everyone else who's learning Korean. Like I've, I'm ex trying to explain it as simply as I can, but that it's going to still take time before this actually clicks. Even if you know the material, you'll have to actually practice with it and hear it before you'll be able to make a sentence with it naturally. So don't feel like, oh, I still can't make good sentences with it. That's fine. You can watch this live stream again. You can you can search Tony grammar on the internet and find other sentences 
Uh, you can just search Tony in Google and see all the sentences that come up and read a bunch of those until you get better a better feeling of it. But don't expect to master Tony or Torago from this lesson alone because they're intermediate concepts. They require an intermediate knowledge to be able to start and a lot of practice to be getting to get good at it. Really loud. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess Ahimang talking about a common swear word. Can I finish with Nundeo while using Tony? Yeah, yeah, you could. Uh, you wouldn't normally. I mean, be, the reason is Nunde kind of offers that you're you're waiting for them to reply at the end of a sentence. Meunde, meundeo. Like, oh no, it was actually spicy and not what you thought. It, it could be, but I wouldn't go on using it normally. But yeah, you, you could. I don't see why you couldn't. <laughs> you have to say, Okay, anyway, thank you everyone for coming. I should stop here before I go too far. And uh, make sure to vote on the next topic on Tuesday. We'll have some new topics up as well. Thank you for coming. I will see you guys again next time. Kurum, tame to ba. And join the Discord. Thank you.